Hello, and welcome to the show. Now, over the years, we have done many showdowns when it comes to the supercars in various Forza games, sometimes even of different era supercars and so on. But there is a, I can say a kind of a secondary category, and that is the high-end sports cars that perhaps don't get used quite as much. Vehicles, for example, like this TVR Griffith, that doesn't quite fit in with a category fighting against the very fastest of the supercars, but it is still a pretty damn fast vehicle. So today we're going to have a showdown featuring a bunch of, well, the high-end sports cars. And of course, being a fellow race showdown, there are a few oddballs thrown in. So while we have the likes of the TVR Griffith, the Aston Martin Vantage, we also have things like the Shelby GT350R, which admittedly is far cheaper and doesn't quite have the same badge as the rest of these cars, but stats-wise is comparable. And there's a couple of other oddballs thrown in for good luck as well. Now, we did a quick test, and it did look like the TVR was going to be immense. Immense is going to be the word I'm using, hence why it was decided that I should go to the back of the field. Start, starting a pole in the TVR would probably have been a me run away, basically. Now, ideally, I would set these races to have a reverse PI grid, so the statistically slowest cars would start at the back, uh, start at the front, sorry, with the fastest cars down at the back. We can't do that on Horizon 4, so have to kind of make it ourselves a little bit. Now this did give me quite a lot of work to do. Uh, not only did I not particularly, I, I should have probably been rolling a little bit to try and get some sort of a start going, but yeah, so we were <laughs> quite a long way back as we got underway. Now it was a Nissan uh, GTR that jumped to the lead, of course, the all-wheel drive Nissan does have a little bit of an advantage off of the line. Also, this is one of the few categories where the GTR might actually be half competitive. Whenever you put it in the supercar showdowns, it gets murdered by everything. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this might be something the GTR would, would stand half a chance in. And uh, now the Porsche, there's a new uh, 911, it's I guess it's like a mid-tier uh, 911 2019 uh, Camaro that we have in the game. And that ran a little bit wide, clipped some rocks, and that uh, fell back in a Camaro uh, missed a checkpoint early on. TVR was already at the back of the field. After the first lap, we can outdrag the Aston Martin. Now, the TVR is not the most powerful car in this field, not by a long shot. It has a mere 480 horsepower. Uh, cars like the Ferrari. The Ferrari is given was one of those little bit, little bit oddball cars. The Ferrari is the most powerful car in the field. It has some 600, 700 horsepower, but it is very heavy. It's over 4,000 pounds. It's getting on twice the weight of the TVR. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Ferrari, quite heavy car. Also, there's a Demon. We knew the Demon might struggle when it came to the corners. Funny thing is, the Demon... For all of its, actually it's the second most powerful car of course, the Ferrari, the Demon's got more, but for all of its power, the Demon struggles to use it and the TVR just went past it in a straight. That's, that's the, yeah, the TVR is quite fast. We're then fighting against the Vantage, we're up the inside of that. Not too much trouble uh, finding a way past the Aston Martin here. So by the end, as we come up towards the end of lap number two, we'd already climbed our way up to fifth. Ahead, the BMW, uh, the very close in PI, I think it's the closest in PI to the TVR, uh, the M4 GTS. Now, again, that's perhaps a, a little bit more of, a, of a, more of an oddball car. It's kind of a, a, a track version of a more normal vehicle, but you might find it competing against a, a, a TVR, but it's probably more expensive than the TVR, let's be honest. Um, makes an awful, awful lot of noise. Does that M4? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is about that about that car in Forza. Something, something about it. It is just unbelievably noisy, and it is very good in the corners. It can actually give the TVR a little bit of trouble through the turns. One of the few cars that can, uh, but then it doesn't have the straight line speed to go with the with the grip. The Mercedes didn't stand a chance. We sweep around the outside, and that would move me up into third place. Could glance back to make sure we weren't being followed. I mean, the M4 was doing fairly well. Uh, in terms of speed, that does get the move done on the on the Mercedes. Uh, the Ferrari was also slowly working its up way up through the field. That was now sat in sixth. Uh, the, the Ferrari is fast, but doesn't really like being in traffic. It's very fast down the straights, but it's a handful through the corners. If you have cars around it, it gets a little bit bogged down. Uh, the Morgan, surprisingly, so there was a Morgan in this one, the Aero, Aero GT, I believe. Uh, one of the lowest PI cars here, the least powerful car as well. Uh, but it weighs about the same as the TVR. has surprisingly good grip in the corners, just gets completely destroyed when it comes to a straight. I was now on the hunt for the leaders, and I was reeling them in. The Nissan GTR was battling away with the GT350R Mustang. Uh, and I say an interesting, unusual battle, perhaps, between, <laughs> between the pair. In this particular one, though, the Shelby was much better through the corners. Its problem was that the Nissan 
beat it in a straight just about everywhere uh, and the Shelby just couldn't get a pass done or if it did get a pass done it just got immediately overtaken into the next corner were well, they slowing each other down perhaps a little bit <laughs> the TVR had had a lap of clean air and was now very much joining in the fun looking for a way past we try to go to the outside of everything that's a little bit ambitious for all of that uh, then the Mustang just gets left for dead down the straights once more. And let's not forget, you know, that Shelby is not a slow car in a straight line. It's got 500 and something odd horsepower. It's more powerful than the TVR, but Griffith is so much lighter than the cars around. It can just, it just accelerates. It just goes out of these corners. Uh, we're then up into second looking for a way past the Nissan. That defends very heavily through these next corners. I mean, the Nissan knows it's, it's going to have to defend uh, because the TVR is the better car uh, through the corners here. And uh, the thing I didn't realise is that the TVR is the better car Kind of down the straights. The Nissan gives it trouble. I would breeze past a few cars in terms of straight line speed. The Nissan does give it a little bit more trouble. And to be fair, the GTR had a difficult time getting out of the hairpin. I didn't quite get its power down as nicely as possible. But the TVR was just a bit too quick. And having started the race fair way at the back, um, and perhaps should have got going a bit quicker, before the end of a relatively short race, the TVR had worked its way to the front and then pulled the gap. It was phenomenally fast. <laughs> as, I, as I ran away, the GTR and Mustang went back, resuming their fight that we had just left, although it would be the GTR that would get it uh, towards the finish line. The M4, uh, that would take fourth position ahead of the Ferrari. The Ferrari was quick, but couldn't get through the traffic. Uh, then it was the AMG uh, GT. Vantage 911 Demon Morgan uh, Camel Vanquish, sorry, just beats out the Camaro further back. So, that was the first race, the Lakehurst Cop Circuit. A challenging track at the best of times. Race 2, we headed to the Bambara Coast Circuit. And again, the game was being fairly kind to me in terms of positions on the grid. So, we do a similar thing this time. I was hoping to manage to get a little bit, I say, not, not quite full as far back. Uh, the Morgan was given the pole position. Now, this probably not the best track for the poor Morgan. On a really, really technical circuit, I think the Morgan could actually throw up a surprise. I, th I think it could, because it genuinely was surprisingly fast through these corners. It caught a lot of cars out with just how much grip it has. I don't quite know how slash why, but it really does have a lot of grip. Um, but there are two long straights. And this is one of those circuits, one of the few circuits where sort of full-on power cars can work. Not always, but, uh, but can. If you are struggling for straight line speed, the start-finish straight here really, really does hurt. It is busy, it's safe to say. It's rather busy for the TVR, so I'm having to try and figure out my way through all of this. We get to the inside for the run down the start-finish straight. Now, we get past the Demon. I mean, this is where you might expect the Demon to just come soaring back past, but really, in this, in this field, it is not, it's not quick enough. It's not quick enough to to really do all of that much, not in a normal circuit. Anyway, yeah, sure, the Demon's more of a drag car. We put it in as a little bit of an oddball, but uh, yeah, <laughs> against this lot, it might have a bit better top speed. However, for most, most usable applications, it does get beaten by a, a large majority of these cars. So it worked our way up into 8th place. We cleared the GTR and the Shelby. We cleared the Zagato that was struggling uh, a bit around here. The Demon had fallen to the back of the field. Up ahead, we had Mercedes versus Camaro that I was looking to try and get involved with a little bit. I mean, for me, this was more a case of try and get through with losing as little amount of time as possible, which made for an interesting challenge, uh, certainly for the, <laughs> for the TVR. We get onto the back straight. Mercedes goes across to cover. The Camaro's now got a better run on the outside. We end up getting a little bit squished in the middle. We will have more straight line speed than the Merc, and now it's the battle of who breaks the latest, and the TVR can. Pretty much, we throw the TVR into the first corner. I knew if I didn't get past there, we were going to have trouble making it through the field. You just kind of had to go for it and hope the TVR had the grip, and thankfully, it did. And then we were through, and then we were clear of another group. In fact, the uh, Mustang was uh, coming with me a little bit as well. That made the most of that, uh, <laughs> that little group to uh, jump up into seventh place. So, now we are on chasing the next group of cars, the M4 fighting away with the Aston. The Morgan was starting to slowly slip back through the field, like, like a straight line speed, uh, giving trouble. It's three wide, and I'm not going to be able to make it four in all of that. Morgan's desperately trying to fend them off in the middle, but it's just not quite going to work. The Aston Martin's up to third. I'm going to scoot around the outside. I mean, I have more grip than the Morgan and more straight line speed. It was always going to have trouble. The BMW surprised me with just how slow it was getting onto the start-finish straight. Having bumped the back of it, I have to pull out a line, still have 
enough power in straight line of speed in this car to get past. That will move me up into fourth place. We only had a couple of laps to go. Uh, BMW sort of thought about having a look at turn one, but wasn't going to be able to do too much. Got to be careful of the curbs through here. It's very, very easy to get bounced wide, especially in these low sports cars. Although sometimes the rally, sort of rally suspension cars get in trouble, but either way, we were up another position. Uh, the Ferrari was always going to be a bit of a tall order. <laughs> GT4 had worked its way to the front, and running around in clear air and I, I knew the TVR was going to be immensely fast uh, but it's just can I make up enough time the Aston Martin that doesn't stand a chance not down the straights we actually got the move done long before we even got to the corner I mean at this point the Aston Martin was almost not worried about fighting me in some ways it was a case of is it really worth fighting the TVR that you know is just going to pass you on the next straight is it better to just let it do its thing and worry about my own line so I don't get passed by the M4 or by the Shelby that was also catching up uh, through the field so as we head on to the final lap I was up against the 911 as it slides its way through these first couple of corners it bobbles the grass and bobbles the curb but I've got nothing I can quite do through here this is a very very difficult place especially when it was in relatively grippy cars very difficult place to get a pass done so we're going to have to sit and wait through another couple of corners you can see how much more grip and speed I have in the TVR we can just duck underneath the 911 as we head down this back straight put foot down and the Porsche has no answer the 911 was a nice enough car to drive and again a decent grid spot and relatively clean air uh, meant that it could stay kind of out of trouble it was perhaps getting a little bit caught by a few vehicles but yeah that relatively clean uh, relatively clean air is always helpful when it comes to racing we've got three but it was a too little, I say it's too little, too late. We, <laughs> we worked our way through the pack and it was not quite enough time to catch up to the Ferrari. But the TVR was immense yet again. If I'd started where I had on the grid, we would have led by the halfway through the first lap and run away. Uh, we, I think we get fastest lap fractionally. That was with us overtaking and fighting cars. That's how much speed there was in the TVR. Uh, the Aston Martin gets full ahead of the BMW. The Mustang beats the Camaro, beats the GTR. The Demon did get itself up a half-decent way through the field. So, drag racing time. Of course, this completely different. We would expect some perhaps different results. The Demon, for example, should come good here. Now, the all-wheel drive cars, we start off with a short drag race. The all-wheel drive cars are always going to have that launch advantage. They're always going to get off the line pretty damn well. However, the rest of us was going to be a... We didn't really know what way it was going to go. We didn't really know uh, how it was going to fare for the rest of us. It's going to be the Ferrari. Ferrari versus GTR. Uh, unless something very weird happens. They'd been the faster cars in a straight line anyway. And sure enough, off they shoot <laughs> down the middle. The Morgan got a pretty good start. Uh, now, <laughs> things went wrong for the DV. It just didn't get going this time around. And as I saw away from the field, the TVR actually started to catch the lead pair. It does run out of power at about 160, but it started to reel in the lead pair up until that point. Point. Uh, so we get third with the TVR. The Camara gets fourth ahead of the Shelby, perhaps not so much of a surprise, followed by the Vanquish. Uh, the Morgan got a mega start ahead of the 911. The Demon was last. The event the Demon should have been good at, because he just couldn't get going in this one. It struggled, really struggled to get off the line, and it couldn't get it couldn't get sort of going in time to chase down the pack. So things are not looking good for the Dodge. The next run though, we went for a much longer drag race. The airport, it's not, it's slightly longer than quarter of a mile, I'm actually quite sure how long it is, but um, yeah, it's still a fairly, fairly short drag race, so what about the motorway? Now, I admittedly had a slightly laggy start, got held on a grid a little bit, again, very similar to the, okay, I say it's a motorway drag race, there is some kind of corners, but it should be flat for everybody. Regardless, with a bit of an iffy start, we very quickly pulled our way through the field. We get up to about the 160, 170 mile an hour mark and we were we were catching the Ferrari and GTR for a little bit and then we run out. Once once we get to the 100, yeah, once we get to this this end, the GVR is very quick but it doesn't quite have the power to match the Ferrari. Or as it turns out that GTR. No one was expecting the GTR to run away like this. Not not in terms of the straight line speed test, but it really, really did just bolt into the distance. Now, this time things were going better for the Demon, and sure enough, it was just a little too much to ask of the TVR to be able to fight against that one, and the Demon would get third. TVR was very close. I mean, that's a much longer, much longer drag race, and TVR yeah, held fourth. Uh, they would beat the Camaro, uh, then there would be the Vanquish, the 911, the uh, AMG, then the Mustang, the Vantage, the M4 and Morgan, neither of them particularly liking these uh, drag races. You know, they are the more handling-based cars. That is perhaps of, of little surprise there. So far, 
so good for, for the TVR and some impressive performances from the oil drive cars. Now, our next test, the noughts to 100 to naught. So not only a test of traction, acceleration, but also of braking. Now, I will be honest, I might have just got on the brakes a tiny, tiny fraction too late with the TVR. Um, the very lightweight nature of the TVR, good for, for getting it slowed down. Uh, it's not it's certainly not the worst car in terms of launching. So we would set the benchmark for the rest to try and beat. Now the Camaro was likely to be pretty good at this sort of thing. Uh, that would get stopped very similarly to the uh, to, to the TVR, the, the, Z, the ZL1, but the 1LE in that thing would monster everything around a corner. Uh, <laughs> 911, not so good at this test. <laughs> uh, I don't think the Porsche had actually got on the brakes by the time it got to where my car had come to a stop. 911, you're not, not quite so good at this test. Now, the GTR has the launch. The GTR really has the launch on this one, and it's the getting to 100 quicker for the Nissan that, uh, that, was, that was made to count there. In fact, you can see by the amount of time it was like sort of diving how long that was on the brakes to get stopped to where it was. But yeah, it could just get to 100 faster. Uh, the Shelby, I mean, we know the Shelby's all about the corners. Perhaps not so massively surprised to see that. Uh, not quite as good with the drag racing. Drag racing stuff. Very good brakes on the car, but yeah, not quite so good. The Demon, well, didn't do too badly. Again, just notice how long it was on the brakes to get to a, <laughs> to a stop there. Gets to 100 quite quickly if it, get, if it all goes to plan, uh, but the struggles to stop is a very heavy car. The Mercedes not having the best of times either uh, with these with these starts. Now, what have we got coming up next? I think that's the Morgan. The poor, <laughs> the poor Morgan, a little underpowered, perhaps, in this. Yeah, that's still not on the brakes. It does, though, uh, go, I think, slightly better than the Porsche down there. Uh, it was the Ferrari that was always going to be... Uh, one of the cars that uh, that I was con concerned about, the cars that I wanted to beat. The BMW up next, similar story uh, to some of the other cars, struggling with the getting to 100 part, get stopped quickly. Not terrible. For the car that kind of struggled a little bit with the drag races, as expected, it wasn't a terrible showing. Here comes that Ferrari. All the power, all the launch is quite immense. Uh, the brakes just, just get it stopped a little bit before the TVI. We did run a couple of practice runs, and I was very close to the Ferrari. Um... I know I screwed up slightly with my braking point, uh, as the Aston Martin does a respectable job for the Vantage. I, I was like a fraction of a second a little bit too late. Um, and, yeah, it's very, very close between this, this the Ferrari, and the GTR. But not as close, it turns out, as the two Astons, as the <laughs> Segato comes to a stop pretty much identically uh, in distance to the uh, Vantage. So, unfortunately, the 911, that'll be last. That was a long, long way down the runway. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. We know the Morgan was always going to struggle. It had had trouble with top end. The 911 wasn't the fastest down the straights. And yeah, the 911 just didn't didn't like this test. The Mercedes, uh, also not particularly great uh, on this one. So there's a little bit of a gap until we come further along. That is when we find the Shelby. That would lose out to the BMW M4. Uh, the, 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 these, these are very, very close. Uh, this sort of with, with these kind of these kind of angles, uh, the Camaro uh, would beat the uh, Mustang as well. The really interesting finish: the two Astons are pr it's pretty much a dead heat between the pair of them. It, it's it's so so very close. I think the Zagato got it, but we're only talking a few millimeters between the pair of them there. It's ridiculously ridiculously close. Uh, yeah, over the other side we have the Demon. And uh, Camaro also incredibly close between the pair of them. The Demon did did pretty well actually on this one, having struggled with with various bits and pieces. Uh, then we have my TVR uh, that does get beaten by the Ferrari, and the Nissan would take victory. The GTR launch, GTR launch was enough to see out there. Uh, now, of course, we have this selection of cars, so naturally we were going to mess around a little bit. What about a drag race where you have to start in the highest gear? Not the same gear, not all sick, but in the highest gear your car has. Well, the answer is everybody stalls, and then everybody stalls again while they try to get the cars going. And you can tell who's not running manual with clutch by the cars that actually got going. Uh, Camaro and Mercedes uh, got themselves, or certainly they, they were, I mean, they got off the line a lot better. Uh, the TVR starts pulling. Once I got it going, it was pretty decent. Decent. Uh, the demon also once gets going uh, would take third. I got fourth with sixth gear. Uh, yeah, some some cars didn't like that test. Funnily enough, the GTR and Ferrari. I mean, it's not really an important test, but the GTR <laughs> Ferrari were not enjoying that. And some cars had a much larger number of gears 
TBR only have six was very helpful. We then went for a reverse drag race, because why not, and things went wrong. With a little bit of contact, everybody getting stuck together, Mercedes tried to avoid the cra- We had a big crash, basically, trying to race in reverse. Uh, <laughs> it's not- <laughs> So that was- that was an abandon and let's try again. Somehow we managed to beans all of that one up. So, reverse. Reverse drag racing here. Uh, again, perfectly important um, industry standardised test. The Ferrari bolts off to the lead, hits the uh, rev limiter. The Shelby relatively fast in reverse, as was the uh, Camaro. I was battling with a demon that then gets a cheeky help from in a bath. I feel like that's definitely cheating going on there. A the TVR not so good at the reverse, the reverse drag racing, and I think the demon actually got pushed across the line before us. So, yeah, um, some cheating was done in, in that. Bloody fear giving it a, giving it a push. But uh, <laughs> there we go. There's some conclusions to be made from all of this. Um, of the cars that we had here, around a circuit, the TVR wins. It is as simple as that. I was dropping to the back of the field and having to work my way through the pack, and I still had the fastest car there. That is how incredibly, incredibly fast that TVR is. I, I knew it was going to be a pretty decent vehicle. I like the Griffith. I hope one day the actual thing gets made, because uh, it is a nice looking car. It was unbelievably fast in this field. Nothing really had an answer uh, for it. Sure, the GT4 has some good top end speed, uh, and the GT4 and the GTR were both very good when it came to the. or GTC4, sorry. Uh, good when it came to the drag races. That all wheel drive traction is helpful. Um, However, the TVR could just about match them for straight line speed a lot of the time, and then out corner the pair of them by quite a big margin. So on track, TVR is the one you want. The really twistiest of circuits, the M4, uh, the M4 GTS was uh, could give the TVR trouble, uh, but would never have the speed uh, to to make it count. The Morgan was impressive in its level of grip, but again, too far down on power. Uh, the Aston Martins were a little bit. Well, this is all for a little bit, little bit mid-pack, uh, pretty much, which uh, I say is a shame. I think the, the Zigato is just too heavy at near £4,000. It's along the lines of the Ferrari. It's just too heavy, not easy enough to drive. The Vantage was a little bit closer, uh, but still couldn't match the TVR for corner grip. So, yeah, I mean, really, <laughs> really, the best of the sports cars, the, the, the Griffith, is, is, is right up there. Uh, the... Say the muscle cars, the Shelby, the Camaro, could put on a good show. Uh, certainly around some of the circuits, they could give these sports cars a real run for their money, a real scare. The Demon, you know, on the very long drags, the Demon's power would come in. But up, other than that, mm, <laughs> not really going to happen. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.